this video is about my style recipe. Where I buy from, brands I favor, styles I prefer, when I buy, and key pieces. So if that piques your interest, keep watching. Let's start by talking about where I buy from. If I'm looking for low cost options, I generally start at the thrift store. As I mentioned in a previous video, I thrift for specialty pieces, something of great quality, something that is a one of one, something that is no longer in a store's inventory, something that may be a few seasons old, but still looks new. I'm looking for high quality. I'm looking for gently used. I'm looking for some bang for my bucks. I'm looking for all those indicators that people took some care to make this garment and it has stood the test of time often or that you just can't find it if you're looking on the rack. I've thrifted some really unique one-off pieces that if I purchased retail, if I could find them retail, they might be really expensive. But shopping thrift saved me a bit of money. Another favorite when I'm looking for low cost items is Target. And generally I'm not just looking for the bargain basement prices when I'm at Target. I'm looking for lower cost basics or something from one of their newest designer collaborations. Or I'm looking for accessories like sunglasses or hats. Now when I'm looking at mall brands or mass market brands or fast fashion, I'm looking for trendy wardrobe enhancers so my wardrobe doesn't stay stagnant because I was focused on basics. So I want something that's gonna give my wardrobe a modern look, make it look like I'm paying attention to the trends even though I'm not following a bunch of them that I know what's out there and I'm, I'm continuously improving my wardrobe. Some of my favorite mall brands, fast fashion brands, or just mass market brands and I'm putting them all in one basket because I probably shop them pretty evenly. In the past few years, I found some gems at H&M. I have shopped less, but still like to look on occasion at Zara. I've also picked up an item or two at Mango of late. Getting to the mid range of those mass market stores, your mall stores, I really am rediscovering my love for Banana Republic. One of the staples that I've worn for years is J. Crew, particularly for the items that I'm more likely to wear to work. I love anthropology for a quirky, feminine, specialty item, a change of pace for my wardrobe, a beautiful dress, a beautiful coat, a nice handbag. There are a lot of beautiful feminine options there to either make that style aesthetic the style story of your wardrobe or to just add some enhancements here or there. I love Nordstrom because they have a stellar return policy. I love the Nordstrom anniversary sale. And I also love that I can get wardrobe staples and I can also get some contemporary or luxury brands there as well. And I love collecting my Nordstrom notes, which you can also collect if you get your tailoring done at Nordstrom. So I love that. My collective Nordstrom notes from tailoring were enough to afford a really nice gift for a family member's birthday and I just love them. So Nordstrom notes, Nordstrom tailoring, top notch. So for more of the bridge lines, diffusion, higher end items that I have, the key pieces of my wardrobe that I kind of build the rest of my collection around and or just for inspiration, there are a few other online shops I visit on occasion to see what's new and what's gonna influence my purchases. So one of my favorites is Shopbop. I love Shopbop. They're owned by Amazon. I've got some really nice quality pieces from Shopbop and they will continue to be one of my favorite stores for quite some time. Net-A-Porter is also a favorite store of mine, oftentimes for inspiration or super sale. A lot of my higher end pieces are actually from Net-A-Porter that I bought during their sale season. I love the Net-A-Porter layout. I love that they give you uh, alerts when something that you had on your wish list is back in stock. I've had really easy purchases and returns. You do have to pay very close attention to the size conversions and the fit guidelines 
And even with that, sometimes you can get it wrong. That's why, well, it's one of the reasons I prefer to shop Net-A-Porter on sale. If it's something that I've had my eye on and it has reduced in price significantly, I may get two of the items to make sure I have the best fit and return the one that does not fit. Because we're talking about making a big purchase of something that you cannot try on in store necessarily. If you can do it, I do recommend it. Those are my top two for those higher end purchases. I do plan on exploring a little bit more of Farfetch and Essence in the future. But as of right now, I can't say that I have made any purchases from either of them. I've purchased some uh, Burberry items from Matches and it was a no hassle sale. Easy, easy as pie. Now, it's so funny because Essence is spelled S-S-E-N-S-E. -S -S -E. And so when I hear Essence, I'm always thinking about Essence Magazine, not Essence, the high-end retailer. Now let's talk about all season key wardrobe pieces. This may be helpful if you are starting the process of building a wardrobe, if you are comfortable with your wardrobe, but you feel that you may be missing one or two key pieces. This list may resonate with you. You may be inspired to add a few or take a few off the list. Please let me know in the comments what you'd add to the list or what you take away. Item one, the no iron button down shirt. This is a staple for me. I've owned several of these. I usually retire them after a couple years because they get dingy or they get stained and I do have a favorite brand. I love the Brooks Brothers classic no iron button down. My plan was to purchase a new one over the holiday season on promotion because they're a little pricey. Ordered one, they told me it was on back order. Where is it? Canceled. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to reorder now that it's magically back in stock and actually ask them, can you honor the price that I originally purchased this shirt for? Stay tuned because I'm gonna let you know what they say. So that's item one, no iron button down because I love the look of a crisp white shirt. But as you may know, during the day, as you are putting on your seatbelt, moving around, sitting, standing, doing what you do, it could get wrinkly. So I think a no iron button down is a great option. The Brooks Brothers shirts you can wash at home, dry, hang up, and they're pretty good. But I still steam mine and it really makes them look crisp. Now you're not supposed to iron them at all. You know, when they say no iron, it means no iron. Do not put an iron on it. But it does give you that crisp look. But once again, when you buy white things, they don't remain pristine. And that's just a fact of life. So just like you may have to replace a white tee, you'll have to replace your white button down. So nothing's gonna stay doing pristine forever. Item two is a dark neutral long sleeve sweater. I would say a dark neutral long sleeve cashmere sweater if you can get it. I have a small collection of cashmere sweaters that I have amassed probably over about five years and I would just wait till these sweaters went on super sale. I have a few from J. Crew, and I have a few from Equipment. Equipment is a favorite brand of mine for cashmere specifically. I also wash my cashmere. I've used the laundress products in the recent past, but they've had a recent recall of their products, so I haven't repurchased, but they do have a wool and cashmere wash that has a cedar scent, and I believe that is to deter moths. There'll be a future video about taking care of your clothes, but yeah, I don't send cashmere to the dry cleaner. I made that mistake once and basically got a black cashmere shirt with a whole bunch of fuzz balls all over it almost threadbare. A friend of mine who knits told me don't ever do that again. And uh, actually volunteered to wash my cashmere for me because she was just like, is that much of a no-no? So wash your cashmere at home. Moving on, a white tee. And it sounds like you can just check that off the list, move on with life. No, you have to find a white tee that works for you. Where does it need to hit on you? How deep is the V? Is it a V neck or is it a crew neck? What is the thickness? 
do you need to cover your hips and bottom? It's a very personal decision finding the right tee for you. I will link my favorite tee if I can find it, but they do sell out quickly. I purchased my tees from Target and they are the Universal Thread. I think that's what the brand is. I always want to confuse Universal Thread with Universal Design. That's, that's a whole other thing. But anyway, I like Target tees and that's where I get mine. So item three is a white tee. V-neck or crew, whatever works for you. The next item is actually a couple items. A dark neutral suit. And that means a blazer and trousers. If you can get a dress or a skirt in there, you're bad in a thousand. Whether that's navy, black, charcoal, I would suggest that you get these pieces in a four season wool or a tropical weight wool. That way you can wear it whenever you want to. This is something that you may have in your closet for presentations, business events, if you want to break it down into pieces and wear it casually or have it as a part of your work wardrobe that you pull the pants one day and you pull the blazer another and that you wear the blazer with jeans you can do a lot with the suit i have a black suit from j crew i have a gray suit and a black suit from jc penny which isn't the same quality but i needed petite suiting for a two day interview. And I was able to get, I think five pieces for about $150. And I still have it. Got the job by the way. Still have the pieces. It was four years ago and they still fit. Sure do. Dark suiting for season tropical weight wool. If you can get it, get the highest wool content that you can afford right now. Even if that means no wool content, that's okay too. Wardrobes evolve. And as you can switch them out, or as you need to, move on up to tropical weight wool. A white camisole is just a versatile underpinning that you can wear under a number of shirts. You can wear with a blazer. Just is a staple in my wardrobe. I'm always looking for a white camisole and I have several of them. My favorites are from Old Navy. I get them in a multi-pack. They come in petites. I think they're cotton. They are cotton and I haven't shopped for them recently, but if I can find a link, I'll share them. So all the links that I can find, I will share. The little black dress. I'm gonna cheat on this one because I have it listed as one item, but I think it should be two. You have your modest black dress and you have your party black dress, okay? Your modest black dress is possibly a part of your suit combo. It is not tight fitting, it is professional it can be worn in multiple scenarios even for not so happy occasions family gatherings you know if someone passes unfortunately and you need to have a black dress you'll have one on the ready and so i know we don't like to think about these things because they are not pleasant but i have a black dress just in case the other dress is a party dress it can be tight fitting it could be body hugging, it could be short. Ooh, a black slip dress would be perfect, by the way. Next up is an occasion dress. This can be a colorful, a floral, a frilly, a romantic, something that would be wedding guest appropriate. Or even if you go to a religious service during the spring, maybe for Easter, or a, a baby shower, a bridal shower, something nice and flowy, light and feminine. If that's not your style, an alternative may be a jumpsuit. Your occasion dress, your occasion jumpsuit. Up to you. The next staple is a pair of jeans. And you can choose if you want to wear a dark wash, a medium wash, if you want a gray pair or a black pair. Just the most important thing is pick a modern cut. I know some people don't like wearing skinnies. You might want to have a looser fit. Choose a rise that suits your body and make sure that the length of the jeans suits your height. So that is the most challenging part of a wardrobe for me is finding a good fit in your jeans. And it took me multiple tries and multiple stores to find good jeans that fit. I found good fit with Old Navy jeans, H&M jeans, Joe's, Maywell, AG, and Frame. I think I have one pair of Target jeans. 
a long wool coat or cashmere coat or the highest natural fiber you can afford. If it is 60% wool, 70% wool, that's fine. Just when it comes to long coats, sometimes you get what you pay for. I do have some coats that I've just bought for fashion too, and that's fine once you build out your wardrobe. But if you're going to invest in maybe one or two things that are gonna be quality, I would say it would need to be your coats and your boots. So yeah, coats should be a natural fiber, wool or cashmere, and the highest fabric content you can afford. I look for my coats on sale. I rarely buy them full price with the exception of certain stores that I know will sell out and they will not come back in stock, with the exception of things that sometimes, if I can find them in petite, because goodness knows if you are petite, you see something you like and it's in your size, sometimes you just gotta get it. And I would imagine that that would be the same for any of the specialty sizes. If you are tall, if you are slim, if you are curvy, if you like it and it's from a brand that you know makes quality, sometimes you gotta jump on it while it's available. If that's been an issue for you, please let me know and let me know about the specialty sizing that you find the most challenging in the comments. On the theme of outerwear, a short jacket. And in this category, choose your preference. It could be a leather jacket, it could be a short trench, it could be a bomber jacket, it could be a jean jacket. If you're looking for that versatile short jacket that you can wear with multiple items in your wardrobe. Heels, pair of black pumps at a height that you can walk in. These are the heels that you would wear maybe with your suiting. A black pair is great, but also a nude pair. And when I say nude, I don't mean taupe or bone. If your skin is not taupe or bone. If you are a person of color, nude is the color of your skin, it is not the color on the box. And if for some reason you cannot find a shoe that matches your skin tone, you can find a shoe repair place. If it is a leather shoe, this is a old pageant trick. You can find a shoe repair place that will dye shoes you can call them up and ask them, do they dye shoes? Ask them specifically, do they dye leather shoes? Because you are trying to get a nude shoe, but you can tell them, I need this dye to match my skin tone. You can take a leather nude and get it dyed. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that people still have to do this in this modern age, but sometimes it's challenging as a woman of color to find your nude shoe. If you have a specific brand or a specific shoe that is your go-to, please share that in the comments. I'm sure that many can find such information helpful. You got your heels, like I said, a black one, bonus points for nude. Next up is a sandal pump, and that is an open-toed sandal pump, kind of like your party shoes that you would wear with your cocktail dress or your party dress and that can be in a, a black or a metallic, something that will go with multiple dresses in your wardrobe, something that you can go ahead and pack real quick if you're going on a girl's trip. And these shoes may actually be car curb, so they can be a little bit higher than your everyday pumps. The next item, closed toe flats. That could be loafers or ballet flats or a pair of leather shoes of your choosing. If you don't wear leather, faux leather, will do just fine. Sandals. I actually like having a couple of good quality pair of sandals, but I also like buying a few pairs of sandals from Target every season. They come out with really cute stuff, I don't know, and I need a little bit of variety because I don't wanna just have one pair of sandals for the season and wear them out like I did my Hermes Oran. They've moved on, they've moved out. We have been together too long. Athletic shoes. So I have a couple of pair of athletic shoes and I wore them more when I went to Pilates, which I need to start over again. But I also wear them for traveling. I wear them for errands. I wear them for weekends. And so just a pair of comfortable shoes that you can wear all day and you can wear with casual outfits. 
My favorite athletic shoe brand right now is APL, Athletic Propulsion Labs. They just look very streamlined and clean and minimal. I love them. Leather boots. I think they're a wardrobe staple. You're gonna need them in fall. You're gonna need them in winter. I would say start with black leather boots. I would also suggest that you get a leather boot where the heel can be replaced and the sole can be replaced. So when they wear down, you can take them to a cobbler and get them repaired season after season. I believe I read somewhere that you can get shoes or you should get shoes resold no more than three times. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you know differently. But you want to, for your investment boots and loafers, your high quality shoes to have replaceable heels and soles. Not just one thick piece of textile that once it wears out, that that shoe's over. Once you wear it down, it's over. You don't want that. You want your cobbler to be able to remove and replace. A wool or cashmere scarf or two. I would say start with the neutral, maybe then get a pop of your favorite colors. Great accessory for colder months. I don't like to feel any air on my neck and on my ankles and feet. And so I would definitely suggest getting a scarf for practical reasons, but also as outfit enhancers during the colder months. Sunglasses. I generally get sunglasses from Target and Nordstrom Rack. Target, I just get my stylish cheapies that I love and I really feel like they enhance an outfit. When I'm shopping in Nordstrom Rack, it's usually designer sunglasses on a deep, deep discount. But currently, one of my most worn pair of sunglasses I purchased from TJ Maxx and it's a brand that I did not know made sunglasses. But they're fry. So did you know Fry made sunglasses? Neither did I, until I was in TJ Maxx. Yeah, had no idea. Now I can see again, there we go. So yeah, these have been my staples for the season, Fry Sunglasses. I believe these were $9.99 or something like that. Maximum for the minimum. Another staple would be a good old leather handbag. I would suggest a shoulder bag or a crossbody bag, specifically one that you can carry to work. Maybe carry a few files in, maybe carry your essentials and a digital device that you use on a daily. We're talking about a practical everyday bag. A clutch for special occasions. Bonus points if it has straps or has the ability to allow you to attach straps. So now let's talk about my favorite brands. Brand one, Free People. And I love it because it has this boho chic, flowy music festival look. Great for vacations, great for spring, a lot of natural fibers beautiful flowing outfits. Hey, they ain't cheap though, but there's a few items on this list that are because we're talking favorites here. So there's that. I like Theory because they have great quality. They have a lot of what I would consider business attire. I love them. I have to be careful as far as what I get from Theory because their fit model must be very narrow hipped. I am not narrow hipped. <laughs> As a pear shaped person, I have to be mindful of what I get from Theory. I do have a shirt or two and a coat, I believe. Frame denim. I do have a few pair of jeans from Frame. I used to have a lovely leather snake print coat from Frame that I actually sold on Poshmark. And I bought it at Nordstrom for an extremely discounted price, but it was lovely. I also like AG denim which I generally get during Nordstrom anniversary sale because it is higher priced denim. It suits me as far as having generous hip area and backside and the length works for me as a petite. Coach, I do love Coach. They make amazing handbags. They are on the come up. Coach has been in the game for a while. I think they're getting a resurgence in popularity of late, but Coach makes really nice handbags, makes nice leather goods, makes wonderful boots. I have two pair of coach boots. I have my eye out for another pair to come back in stock. They are built to last, as are their handbags. One of my 
ride or die handbags that I wear almost on a daily basis for work. It is Coach and it is durable. Yes, one of my favorite brands. Rag and Bone. Rag and Bone, I only have a couple of items from Rag and Bone in my closet. I think they're stars of my wardrobe, really specialty pieces that stand out without trying. One of them is a silk shirt that I've had for at least five years and I don't even wear silk that much. But this shirt is a banger and I love it. It is a staple in my professional wardrobe. If I go to a conference, I just might be wearing it. I also have a newly acquired rag and bone jacket. I think I may have mentioned that. I'm very excited about it. So <laughs> it's a spring jacket though, I think. I'm gonna be wearing it in transition weather. Isabel Morant. Isabel Morant hits this 80s vibe for me. Like big shoulders, acid wash parachute looking pants uh, sometimes but every now and then I there's a banger that just hits my style aesthetic and for me what I love about Isabel Morant mostly is the accessories and so I have two Isabel Morant scarves that I love wear on a weekly basis the row I have one item from the row and it is a pair of boots that I bought on sale not quite sure the vendor I bought it from but the Row is the brand from Ashley and Mary Kay Olsen. It is minimal luxury. It is quiet luxury. It is elegant. It is turn your pockets inside out. Probably equal to my love of the Row is my love of Celine. I love Celine handbags. I have owned, I think maybe four Celine handbags. I currently just have one. I'm gonna be a Celine customer for years. Let me have two or three dollars in the bank. I'll be right at the store, pointing at stuff, ring it up. Loewe. As much as I love Celine, I have one Celine bag, but I have two Loewe bags. And Loewe is again one of those brands that can represent quiet luxury, but sometimes they do the one off, sometimes they do the quirky, the unique, the showstopper items. But I'm not looking for showstopper. I'm looking for quiet, luxury, some staples, the timeless, the unique, but not necessarily an oddity. And so I do love Loewe. Burberry, I don't have any Burberry trench coats or Burberry coats. I do have Burberry scarves. There was a period a couple years ago where they made these beautiful full square fringe scarves that were lovely. And I have two of those and then they made a lovely logo scarf that's in black and white and I got that too. But since that time I haven't found any other Burberry scarves that really inspired me. And so I'm always looking to be inspired by their scarves again, their accessories. I love what I have but I'm not necessarily on the hunt for more Burberry items at this time. Let me go through the list again. My favorite brands, Free People, Theory, Frame, AG Denim, Coach, Rag and Bone, Isabel Morant, The Row, Celine, Webby, Burberry. <laughs> Burberry. I am very interested in knowing your favorite brands, whether or not you have them in your closet. If their styles influence your purchases and your preferences, let me know. I'd love to research and learn about new brands or maybe even build my own wardrobe with items from your favorite brands. When do I shop the most? I shop the most when I'm thrifting right after Christmas when everybody is doing their donations and in that new year, new me phase and they're letting go of things that no longer suited them that might work perfectly for my closet. Now when I'm shopping retail, I do shop Black Friday sales, but usually there are brands that I've been waiting on for a while, specifically with my jewelry. I like Masoma jewelry and so I'll shop their sales and a couple of the other big sales I'll shop for Black Friday. There are also a few retailers that I have learned the pattern of their big sales, like Netta Porter, like Shopbop. Also, I shop Nordstrom Anniversary Sale, which happens every July, and that's generally for restock of foundation garments, jeans, essentials. I'm not generally looking for unique pieces when I'm shopping Nordstrom Anniversary Sale. I may be shopping some specific cosmetic products that I always go on sale or some specific brands to see if they have any of the staples I'm looking for in stock. Now, as far as inventory and storage, if there's something for the current season that I don't think I'll be wearing again for the next season, I will sell during the season that people wear it so that it will have a better chance of selling on Poshmark. Like I sell coats 
December, January, February. I'm selling sweaters December, January, and February. I'm not selling sundresses right now. I assess my closet mid-season to see if there are things that I want to resell. At the end of season, I reflect back on my wardrobe pieces, what was worn, what was not worn, and determine what needs to be stored, repaired, or donated. Generally, I don't have a lot that needs to be thrown away because I try to reduce that option. I still want my clothes to be a benefit to somebody, but if it's in not wearable condition, I'm not going to try to pass it along to a thrift store. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I'll be sure to leave a playlist of my personal style right there. And I will see you next time.